Well, it's 4.30 and the court is done for the day. It's such a long trial that it actually interferes with other trials. So there's going to be a two-day hiatus. Everyone will be back here on Friday. That's when Lawrence Greenspawn, the senior of the three defense counsel for Tamara Leach, is expected to make his presentation. But I have to say, the judge herself said she is still holding open some dates in September for possibly extending the trial then if time is needed. Just astonishing. But I I suppose nothing should be surprising anymore. There was an interesting moment there. I, I mean, I have not been here every day. We've had other rebels covering it every day. But the prosecution played five short social media clips in which Tamara Leach was present. In some of them, she was only present for 15 seconds or so. And they were all very banal. In fact, I I didn't quite understand the point of them until the defense counsel who played them summed it up. Uh, Like it was just her standing amongst other people saying it was like uh, Canada Day on steroids, I think. And then another time someone said, hold the line. And she said, hold the line. I was thinking of Chris Barber. He handled it like a pro. I'm Sean. And what's your message to the protesters? Yesterday, the message from organizers was that they they were not there, that protesters aren't here illegally. Police say they are here illegally and they can be charged. Do you accept that this is an illegal protest? It's not an illegal protest. It's in our charter of rights and freedoms. And so what's your response then if you do get arrested, if you're the next person that police do arrest? I'd love it if you speak louder. <laughs> She wants to know what my response would be if I get arrested. What's the response? <laughs> Hold the line! Hold the line! Why are they playing these five video clips? And the answer is, that is the totality of evidence this trial has seen about what Tamara Leach actually did during the time of the convoy. She had some video comments that she made on social media uh, calling for people to be peaceful and calling for donations. She would have those famous viral Facebook videos, but they were often filmed in a nondescript location. The only evidence before the court about what Tamara Leach actually did in this city through the whole period of time were those five little clips not even taken by her. They were just, she shows up in the background of another clip. And there was, it was a nothing burger. There was nothing there. All of her work that was in the name of the convoy was crowdfunding. And, of course, she did that very well. She did some logistics work. She talked about staying peaceful, none of which is a crime in any way. And that was a point that the defense hammered home, is that there's no evidence of any wrongdoing. And simply saying, hold the line, is so far from a crime that it's such an obvious stretch. And I think that's the obvious point here. There's no evidence on Tamara Leach. They've had months of trials, they have no evidence. They had five little social media clips, they have no evidence. And yet they pursued it nonetheless. When the panel said, listen, give it to six month old babies with zero assurances this possibly would be safe. I said, where were you the day when the WHO came out and said, do not use remdesivir in the hospital? I'm Dr. Peter McCullough. Join me for an evening together. Tickets are on sale now. There's no way that makes sense from a legal point of view. It's not in the public interest. I do not believe that there will be a likelihood of conviction. This is purely a punishment tactic to punish her for daring to defy the establishment and to defame her and through her to defame the trucker convoy. They thought there would be such a mania in Ottawa that all the judges would go along with convictions. You know what? Maybe that would have happened back in 2022, but it's almost 2025 and I think people have sobered up from the madness of the lockdowns and we're starting to see the insanity that was done over the years uh, during the lockdowns and realizing that the, the government got carried away, but the prosecutors in this case are still getting carried away. They're still insisting on going through this. I, I just simply don't understand how they can put away so many more important legal matters, criminal matters, aggravated assault, sexual assault. So many other cases are taking a back seat while these prosecutors and this judge break over what little there is about Tamara Leach. I find it astonishing. Anyways, unfortunately, I can't be back here 
on Friday for that day. So we'll try and get another rebel here. Of course, our friend Mark Joseph from the Democracy Fund, he or others from the Democracy Fund are live tweeting it too. So we are covering this because we really have a lot at stake here too. We have crowdfunded the legal defense for Tamara Leach. We published her book. We're fans of hers. We even went on tour with her and we believe that she is important for the same reason that Justin Trudeau thinks she is important. She personified the best of Canada. She was the chief newsmaker in the chief news moments of the year of 2022, and I dare say of the generation, calling millions of Canadians to rally peacefully against a tyrannical government. It's sort of amazing, which is why Trudeau wants to knock her out and why we want to protect her. That's it for today. Until next time, on behalf of us at Rebel News, to you at home, goodbye, and keep fighting for freedom.